Hi, I'm Dennis Dota, here with the director of Mayo Clinic's Heart Disease Prevention Clinic, Dr. Francisco Lopez Jimenez. And doctor, what is it about heart disease that warrants dedicating a clinic just to its prevention? Hi, Denise. Well, the most important thing is to recognize that heart disease is the number one killer in the U.S. And not only that, half of the people who get a heart attack will have it without any warning signs. And half of the time, they don't even have major risk factors or things that people will be um, anticipating that they will have a heart problem. Help us understand what heart disease is, actually. And we have some animation that illustrates this. Well, picture the arteries that feed your heart. When the uh, fatty plaque builds inside the arteries, the artery becomes narrow. That process that we call atherosclerosis can completely block the artery over time. That plaque, however, can sometimes just crack or rupture, and that creates a blood clot inside the artery. In either way, the blood flow through that artery is completely blocked, and that makes the heart muscle die. That's what we call a heart attack. You've told me that 70 to 80 percent of the time, heart disease is preventable. So I guess we start by identifying who is most at risk. First of all, we need to recognize that there are some things called risk factors. For example, everybody knows that smoking causes heart attacks, but also obesity, especially central obesity, or when the fat gets around the waist, that's a particularly um, um, unhealthy type of obesity. A high cholesterol can also lead to heart disease, diabetes, and also what we call pre-diabetes, when the sugar is up, not too high to be diabetic, but high enough to be abnormal. And of course, high blood pressure can also increase the risk for heart attacks. Now, sometimes heart disease just runs in the family. And it's a particular concern when there is a family member that had a heart attack or a bypass surgery younger than 55. What are some of the other risk factors people may not be as aware of? Um, some conditions like uh, liver disease, like uh, chronic kidney disease, can increase the risk for heart attacks. Um, there are other conditions called inflammatory uh, diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or other rheumatologic conditions, conditions that affect the joints. Those things can double the risk for heart attacks. Something that is very common, however, is this concept of metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a condition similar to uh, diabetes, but, but it's not actually diabetes. It's also called prediabetes, a combination of high triglycerides, central obesity, and few other things that actually double or triple the risk for heart attacks. So when somebody comes to the heart disease prevention clinic, what they're going to receive is some comprehensive care. Where do you begin with each patient? Well, with, when patients come to the clinic, we start with a basic evaluation. We assess the common risk factors. We check for diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol. We then get all that information into a special formula that was created by the American Heart Association that formula generates a risk, and that risk determines the likelihood that that person will develop a heart attack in the next 10 years. We also use some formulas to calculate the risk in 30 years. After we do that, which is pretty much the basic thing and doesn't require a lot of fancy testing, we go to the next level. In some patients, we actually have to do other tests to determine if they have an increased risk for heart attacks. For example, we do a test called coronary calcium scan, checking for calcium inside the heart, because if there is calcium, the patient very likely has cholesterol buildup. We also check for the ankle brachial index. It's a way to assess the arterial stiffness or how stiff or the arteries are. Some patients who have blocked arteries in the legs will have an abnormal uh, ankle brachial index. We check for the arteries in the neck to look for cholesterol buildup, and we also check for some advanced blood testing to identify inflammation or special cholesterols that are very rare, but in some individuals will increase the risk for heart attacks. Occasionally, we might check some genetic markers in some patients. Very good. And from that information, then, you develop an action plan for them. What does that entail? That's correct. So we, we make a plan for patients that includes two things. One is related to lifestyle. And in that, we include nutrition and an exercise prescription. We tailor the exercise uh, prescription to each patient according to their specific needs, limitations, and, and abilities. 
We also decide on medications because some, medic some patients require cholesterol medicines, some patients require to take aspirin, and some patients require to take some special medications aimed to reduce the risk for heart attacks. And because this is a heart disease prevention clinic, you probably would like to see patients at a younger age in many circumstances to get them on the right road early. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we need to understand that heart disease affects uh, all ages. And there are many, many heart attacks that happen in people uh, younger than 55. So we are seeing that uh, pretty often. And that's why waiting for the, for the time when heart disease occurs is not the wisest uh, thing. I think it's important to keep in mind that half of the heart attacks are fatal. So half of the people who get a heart attack will die before they make it to the hospital. So I think prevention is really the key to identify those who are at the, at the greatest risk. And many of these services, whether they're preventive or care management services, are covered by insurance now, which makes it easier for a lot of folks. And I want to thank you for this wonderful overview on heart disease prevention today. And we put some resources at the bottom of your screen as well. So if you want more information or you'd like to schedule an appointment, uh, just take advantage of the phone number you see right there, and we're happy to help you out. So again, Dr. Lopez thank Jimenez, thank you very much for being with us today. And from Mayo Clinic, we hope you have a wonderful day.